Let's dig deeper now and bring in two senior economists to talk about the budget speech and the document. Uh, Pedro Antunes is the chief economist from the Conference Board of Canada. Angela McEwen, senior economist with the Canadian Union of Public Employees. Hello to both of you. Hello. So a lot to talk about here, but uh, you know, first I want to begin with some of the numbers that we are looking at. Forty point one billion dollar, the projected deficit for twenty three twenty four. You know, Pedro, I, I'm wondering if you are you are at all worried that the federal government does not seem to have a, a path back to surplus when you look at the five years that they've laid out ahead of us. Yeah, it is a bit disappointing. I know that uh, part of the problem has been on the revenue side. We've got a very weak economic outlook for 2023, and that has hit uh, government revenues. And uh, we did know that uh, we were going to see more spending on health care. Uh, we do, you know, we also had some good indication that we were going to see something to try and compete uh, with the kind of uh, Inflation Reduction Act in the U.S., which was a massive program. And uh, I don't think we're anywhere near competing with that yet. Uh, so there are obviously pressures that the government has to face, but um, it was a bit disappointing to see that uh, we did have in the economic and the fall economic statement uh, a surplus by the time we got to 2027-28, which is you know, essentially five years down the road. Uh, and now we're still looking at a fairly sizable deficit in that year. And of course, you know, time will tell we'll, where we will truly end up uh, by the time we get five years down the road. Um, you know, and I guess part of the issue I have with that is that uh, we're seeing uh, still, despite the fact that economic growth is is expected to slow, we're in a, a situation of really full employment, very low unemployment rates. It should be fairly favorable here uh, for government revenues. And, you know, in many respects, we could uh, be, uh, you know, in, in living a, a much better fiscal situation than we are. Mm -hmm. Angela, do you, do you share the same concern? Because, you know, to hear it from the finance minister, uh, she does make this argument that Canada is doing better than other G7 countries. Uh, she says the deficit spending will be held to around uh, 1% of GDP. And really, we're talking about 1.5 to, to 0.5%. Uh, what do you make of the argument that the government's making around spending? Are you worried that there seems to not be any type of plan to get us back into the black? No. Uh, I think that a budget deficit or surplus is only part of the picture. Uh, you need to take into account uh, the cost of not doing anything in terms of some of the stuff that we're talking about spending on. Uh, and you also, I mean, five years out, as Pedro said, there's a lot of uncertainty here. We don't know uh, if there's going to be a recession this year or not. So I think that focus is is a little misguided. It really matters more. What are we spending on? Uh, are we spending enough to uh, make the impacts that we're talking about in terms of growing the economy, in terms of uh, improving inequality? Uh, and and less on whether or not the forecast says five years out we're in a, a surplus or a deficit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now there 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 will be a lot of money going towards uh, affordability, healthcare, and the green economy. But I do want to talk about affordability here first and foremost, because we were getting an indication that the government would be moving forward with this once the budget was tabled. There are incentives like dental care, uh, housing, those are longer term. But there are also uh, these one-time payments so from groceries and, anti, uh, and an anti-inflation payment as well. I'm wondering, Pedro, how meaningful will those really one-time payments actually be? Well, I mean, they're they're fairly sizable, and they're right up front. Uh, you know, I think we were talking about, um, if I'm not mistaken, again, we've had a very quick look at the at the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, but somewhere around 2.5 billion, if I'm not mistaken, at kind of the one time payment uh, that's going into households' pockets. Uh, these are targeted. Um, you know, they're they they are targeted to lower income households, uh, and in a way, you know, obviously that's kind of dealing the money to where the pain is being felt the most. Uh, but when we look overall, you know, we did see the provincial governments with a lot of measures that they've put in place. Uh, the Quebec government in their budget just uh, uh, a few days ago announced, uh, you know, quite significant uh, tax cuts. Uh, and these are all coming in at a time when, you know, essentially the Bank of Canada is, is trying to lower spending, essentially trying to hit consumers to get uh, essentially inf inflation down. Uh, you know, we're talking about a soft economic outlook for this year, but that is the intent of monetary policy right now is to soften uh, economic activity so that we allow uh, inflation to uh, to settle, settle back down. 
down. So, uh, you know, I think we need to be very concerned about when the, the, the timing of some of this money coming into the economy and the fact that, in, you know, essentially the, the Bank of Canada may have to turn around and, well, hopefully that's not the case, but may have to turn around and deal with uh, a stronger inflation down the road. Mm -hmm. yeah, Angela, what do you make of those payments? Uh, will they be helpful? Will they be, will they actually harm the economy? Yeah, so the grocery rebate is actually just a continuation of the GST credit, right? That's They're just giving it a new name, a uh, bit of a branding exercise there. It is a lot of money in total. It's very targeted. Um, and it's actually not a lot of money for the people who are getting it. When you are considering the amount of uh, costs increases that they're facing in terms of rent, in terms of, of grocery, of food costs going up, these, these costs have gone up by a lot more than that uh, for families. So it will help take the edge off, absolutely. Uh, but it doesn't change anything structural. So there was a real missed opportunity in this budget to do something structural around corporate profiteering that has been driving inflation. They've done nothing on that. So of course, uh, we're going to continue to see uh, corporations set prices higher um, because there's nothing to stop it. And the only tool we have, they claim, uh, is the Bank of Canada reducing demand, which, as Pedro points out, demand is money in our pockets, money in workers' pockets. Uh, so they want us to have less money so that we can buy fewer things. Uh, and that's how they think they're going to control inflation. It's not working because inflation is a supply side issue. Uh, and because there there um, isn't a lot of competition in uh, the Canadian market, a whole bunch of reasons why key uh, sectors have been able to raise their prices higher. Uh, and so workers and consumers are bearing the brunt of inflation, and this budget had nothing structural to help people with that. Well, I, I do wonder, when, when and, I, and I appreciate that you guys have had a very quick look at it, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of wiggle room for the government, Pedro, in terms of uh, perhaps uh, dealing with a shortfall. What kind of economic outlook does this budget paint for Canadians? Well, again, it's a very weak outlook. Uh, essentially, we're talking about a, a small recession, possibly. Uh, most of the outlooks here, you know, I've talked to some of the peers that uh, the banks, et cetera, that are uh, contributing to the kind of uh, consensus forecast. Um, and we're all essentially looking at a, a similar story, some uh, deeper slowdown than others, but essentially growth flattening out. Now, we've had, in, in fact, very good numbers on uh, on the employment front so far this year. You know, wages are now catching up to inflation. Uh, so there's there's a, a concern that we may, in fact, continue to see fairly strong uh, consumer spending behavior, even though it had flattened out in the, in the latter half of, of last year. So I think most of the forecasts now are really looking at kind of flattish growth towards the end of, the, excuse me, towards the end of this year uh, into early next year. And so we have uh, two years, 2023 and 2024, that are looking rather weak uh, in terms of real economic activity. Um, whether we actually succeed, and again, this is the intent right now of monetary policy, is to kind of flatten out that spending so that we can get, uh, you know, essentially inflation down. And I, I would agree, uh, you know, a lot of the inflation pressures have been on the supply side. Uh, but as we look forward, what is going to be kind of tenacious on inflation is the, the wage growth that we have now, which is running at 5.2, 5.3%. Uh, that is going to start affecting the underlying core inflation numbers in this country. Uh, and that may be tougher, in fact, to, to see that work and whittle its its way back down to uh, to get inflation to the to the target range, you know, between one and three mm percent. -hmm. Now, I have a little bit of time left here. And before the two of you go, I also want to talk about uh, the green measures, if you will, because certainly that figures very largely in this budget. The government uh, relying on tax credits, also incentives essentially to get private industry to invest in the new economy. I'm wondering what you make of that strategy. Uh, Pedro, I'll begin with you, because again, we're talking about a host of incentives rather than becoming direct players in creating the economy of the future. What do you make of that strategy? Well, I mean, you know, governments always hate to tax the uh, the kind of the the bad, and and rather they prefer to incent uh, good behavior, and uh, that can be more costly in, in some ways. But uh, essentially, that's what we're seeing in this budget. The measures uh, over the next six years are not that massive. I mean, if we compare to what was going on in the U.S., the Inflation Reduction Act which is kind of misnamed, but it really is an, an, a green technology act um, that is, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, in total, it's 1.2 trillion, but it's looking at 400 billion U.S. dollars in in, in investment uh, incentives. So, you know, we're not anywhere near competing with that at the moment. I, I think in the budget, and again, we haven't had a chance to look at it very in much detail, but I, I think there's a longer term plan for ramping up those incentives. Uh, but certainly over the next uh, six years, uh, I don't think there's enough there 
there to to really uh, uh, generate a lot of uh, kind of green investments. Well, you know, Angela, I'll, I'll get your opinion on this too, because of course the the ghost in the room was the uh, Inflation Reduction Act in the United States, and whether or not the government would have something to actually counter it. Will what you've seen so far? Do you think attract enough investors here instead of going south of the border? I don't think we can win that game with the United States and we can't win it on tax credits. Tax credits are a really broad and expensive way to try to, to, to do this type of uh, incentivization of investments. Uh, lots of people with lots of great experience in industrial policy have told the Canadian government this leading up to this budget that we can't compete with the United States on tax credits. Um, so, so it is disappointing to see that that was basically their whole strategy here. Um, and, and instead of leading with, uh, you know, public investment in things that they want, working with private uh, industry to, to shape markets uh, for, for private sector uh, green investment. For example, a, a tax credit isn't going to incentivize a new company coming into a sector. Um, it will mostly address people who are already in the sector. And so we want to encourage new companies, creative, innovative companies who are entering into the clean tech sector or attracting new investment into Canada. And tax credits just aren't the way to do that. Well, a little later in today's program, we will take a deeper dive into those environmental uh, initiatives. But uh, Pedro, Angela, really thank you for the time today. Appreciate your insight. You had very little time to go through the document after it was released. So really appreciate you stepping forward today. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks.